Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew, your best source for the newest Atari 2600 and 7800 games and the newest Ataris too. Welcome Atari! <laughs> Welcome everybody to a very special edition of Zero yeah. Page Homebrew. Staying true to the moniker of the uh, newest and best games yes. that we premiere. <laughs> um, tonight we have the exclusive world premiere of Champ Games. New secret homebrew. Yeah. I don't know what it is. You don't know what it is. He doesn't know what it is. Well, he might. I don't know if John he, or Nathan had been talking that's to Atari. True. They might have been. Could Send be. Send him code. He's yep. like, secret oh, codes. Yeah. no, I like that idea. Yeah, Maybe yeah. he knows the code to get into the game this yeah. year. Yeah, ooh, yeah. So, uh... Ring the bell. Ring the bell ding, for ding, the Ding, 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 yeah. ding. <laughs> so, uh, this has become a tradition now. This is the third year in a row in around May, yeah. uh, that we've been revealing Champ Games' secret new homebrew. Nice. The first year it was Galaga. Oh, yeah. Galaga. Yeah. Last year it was Robotron, Robotron yes. 20, 2084. Yes. Yeah, thank you very much, Miss Command, Yay. for resubscribing. <laughs> be good, be good, be good. <laughs> um, and this year, we don't know what it is could be anything the only hint i've been given is that it's an 80s heart arcade port oh d train thank you for resubscribing yeah. as well 18 months Ooh, Oopsie. the code is tattooed under atari's fur you have to oh. shave him no you wouldn't like where that. where do we have to shave him like get the that. clippers get the oh. clippers this is well planned out early, <laughs> early 80s yes. oh we've got to narrow it down oh. um so thank you for everybody showing up tonight welcome uh nathan strum the d train johnny wc the two people johnny wc and yeah, nathan strum we nice. need them here the ones we'll who be know the ones in the know we'll be talking with them oh nice a little bit later Excellent. about their new game whatever it may be <laughs> uh canadian tenor mike soul miss command uh spiceware rc7e uh neo media kaboomer aa nostalgic candreason pack rat great offender dan avc nostalgic rc70 carl g johnny 10 speed splendid nut vitoko leo ames uh now i'm not knowing which Captain ones i've Plastic. said there's so many names there <laughs> uh um, abc i don't know uh canadian tenor <laughs> Colonel yeah. Lama. Yeah. Oh my uh, goodness. Anybody else? Canned Reason, I think I've said your name. And uh, anybody else who I've missed? The top. Yeah. And uh, I want to thank all to the subscribers, of which wow. I don't have a list, but you can read them down the side. And the people who just resubscribed the D Train, Miss Command. Um, I saw uh, Spiceware Ramir in there somewhere too. S. Ramirez 2008. Yeah. Spiceware did too. Oh, awesome. somewhere on the screen, I think. Yeah. Ricardo Pym last episode. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was, lots, I was in a lots rush. Of peoples, lots of people. So, <laughs> I don't have the Twitch subscribers, but they are down the side, yeah. plus the new ones. Yes. There you go. Um, and you can support the show and click uh, subscribe for free if you have Amazon Prime and link it to your Twitch Prime. Mm -hmm. And make sure you follow and like, especially follow this channel twitch so that you will get alerted when we're on that's right because we might be on during the break because we're coming up to a break a very short couple weeks break yes um but we'll be back yeah not too long mm -hmm. um and subscribe to youtube and facebook and instagram and twitter um the guesses now i put out a call yes on everything uh, all the things for all, all the, the all the things uh to see what people thought it might be and here are the tons of guesses. Yeah, I like bet. Tons I bet. of guesses. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Do, Sydney Hunter, which is a strange guess. That's somebody else's homebrew game. Gyrus, mm -hmm. uh, which would be awesome. Mm -hmm. Already exists, though, on the 2600. Zaxxon, Elevator Action, Mooncresta, Rescue of Fractilis. Good luck with that one. Uh, Kicks. Uh, uh, E.T. 2, Revenge of the Pit. Some of them are funny ones. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mortal Kombat, Burger Time Arcade, Spy Hunter, Food Fight, Satan's Hollow, Spy, Spy Hunter again. Some of them are repeats. Uh, Phoenix, uh, Champ Sports Baseball, Champ Sports Hockey, Mountain Raider, uh, Tempest, Tron, Nibbler, Donkey Kong Jr., Dr. Micro, Mr. Do again, 1942, Smash TV, Mortal Kombat again. 
uh, Sinistar, Eyes, Nibbler, Food Fight, RC Pro Am, Armor Attack, Tubin, Bullfighter, Load Runner, Turbo, Outrun, Time Pilot Arcade, Phoenix, Mr. Do again, a lot of Mr. Do's. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a very popular game. Yeah. Uh, Tron, Crazy Kong, Defender, Time Pilot, Gyrus, Pepper 2, Black Widow, Tempest, Sinistar, Dig Dug, Mr. Do, Guzzler, Bubbles, Glob, <gasps> Sinistar, Lunar Lander, Defender, Donkey Kong Arcade, Outrun, Satan's Hollow, Street Fighter, Alpha Again. 3, yeah. <laughs> uh, Gradius, um, and that is all the guesses from like Facebook and the Atari age and forums, forums and all over the place there. Okay. And there was a bunch in the, in the chat here as well. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. I Don see them all floating up Gauntlet. the page. Yeah. That would be, that Ooh. would be amazing. Hint. Someone guessed it. Well, Ooh. amongst all this. And, and on the page there. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. Um, so now onto our guesses or at least my guesses. <laughs> Your guesses. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or my hopes maybe. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Which one should I use? Um, I don't know what you're looking at there. Oh. I know. This is misbehaving a little bit. Oh, it is. I'll fix it up. There, there we, go. we go. That's better. Um, Bomb Jack, 2600. Nice. These I made all these covers. Because <laughs> I put Champ Games below it as well. Uh, the, these are not real. You should have these said are not real. guesses in, 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 in writing across so guesses. the front of them. I have no idea why 7800 is up there. Oh. Uh, Bobble Bobble, <laughs> which would be amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very hard. Yeah. Because there's bubbles and stuff all over the place. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't think Bomb Jack would be too hard. Some other people have attempted it, though. Mm. Uh, Mr. Do, That's I guess that as well. A lot of people have that on their list. Um, Satan's Hollow, mm. of course. Mm. Things. It's something we've wanted for a long Just a game time. We both like so. Yep. <laughs> nice little things in the bottom. I like it. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Uh, Sinistar. Nice. Yep. Uh, Twenty six hundred Tempest. I have no idea how he would do it, so I just drew some lines and <laughs> made them glow. Yeah. No there you idea. Go. Yeah. Uh, Timber twenty six hundred. Nice. Which would be amazing yeah. as well. Uh, so that's all my guesses. Or our, our guesses, because yeah. uh, we, we like a lot of those we talk, same yes, games. Yeah, yeah, we like those games, yeah. Um, so. Ooh. Oh, oh sorry. Let's get reoriented here. Mm -hmm. Timber would be awesome. Oh, some other people know Timber. Yeah. Excellent. Um, so. John Champo um, sent me a special cartridge for this game to be put on. I don't know all the specs of it or why it's a new cartridge, but apparently the Harmony Encore cannot handle this new game. Ooh. So there's some even extra <laughs> extra magic in this cart. It is even more exciting. Mm. So we um, all the Harmony Encore carts are going to have to be updated if you want to play on it, play the game. I don't know if it works on um, uh, Stella, but I'm guessing it does. Mm. Um, it says 128k melody dev cart on it, and I had to load it through the USB port to get gotcha. this working. Gotcha. It does work in Stella. Okay. okay. Lots of ROM, lots of RAM. Yeah. So there's a gerbil on a little wheel yeah. inside the cart. Kaboomer says. Yeah. <laughs> that might help. Yeah. It's extra, extra power. So we're gonna plug that in. Um, so right now I have it configured to one joystick and the Atari Vox. We may have to change that. I, I asked him if I need to plug anything special into it, mm. but he didn't answer. So I'm just going to go for default in case there's voice or something like that. Um, so, okay. Are you ready? Everybody, am I ready? Let me just check. Make sure I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, that all looks good. Okay, so we're going to turn it on. Are you ready for it? I am. I am. I think everyone's I ready. I can't wait. Ready, set. So it's a big game, like Gauntlet. <laughs> paddle game. Yeah, I do, I'll do. i have to plug the paddles in if, <laughs> if it is a paddle game. Uh, how many games in the arcade use paddles? I don't know. Revolution 26. Dead Death A driving <laughs> controller. Okay. Yeah. All right. We're ready. Um, ready? Three. Oh, I better switch it over so we can see it. Yeah. It'd be nice. Uh, I'm sure everyone wants to see it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's too. <laughs> Thank you. 
Might have done that <laughs> Whoa, it's amazing! Might have done Can't that you last see time. how great it is? And the reflections. <laughs> okay, ready? Yeah. <laughs> Three, two, one. Okay, we don't know what it is. It's the passcode. <laughs> but I'll give you Am I this. First, first guess. Well, I kind of set up some other stuff. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, you can start guessing. I'm allowed to. I have to guess at the passcode. <laughs> um, no, you don't have to guess. See the, uh, but the I need chat. to. Where is the chat? Get some stuff. Here we go. For our voice. <laughs> passcode yeah thermonuclear war so it says champ games 2021 enter passcode nice up down select letter left right move cursor i was looking at the older ones yeah and you didn't you were, don't you didn't have the ability to go back you just had to type it in one at a time mm. so uh go for zph go for the obvious one I, i'm very sure it's not that um so what i'm gonna do is bring up the chat on this the game testing title and and John sent it sent this to me and he said, "Oops, I sent you the wrong one. It's 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 the arcade game passcode." <laughs> um, it's not the arcade game passcode. Okay, I'm sure it's not ZPH, but you never know. Could be. No. Nope. Oh, it has sound too. Oh, that might even be. James a hint. already said it. What? I already said. Cat? What? What? I already said. The, well, don't. Uh, let me just get the chat up here first, because we're gonna get uh, John on the. Um... <laughs> James already go. said what the passcode was. Oh, it could be cat. Try cat. Well, what? But Nathan Strom said James already said it. So. Said ph. Uh, I don't know. The cats changed the code. Oh, it's got numbers too. Yeah. Is it the same as my luggage? One, two, three? <laughs> Terrible. K A T B O P? Any guesses? Could be cat. We do have two of them. Oh, what was that? Was that a cup? Yeah, it was a cup. Weird. No. Oh, no, <laughs> it's cat. Kit, Zed. Oh, Z P H. Could be. Okay, I'm going to get. I'm going to put the chat here. Pass one, two, three. John's already given two hints. We haven't seen them. <laughs> oh, we, it went by on the screen too fast. Yeah, you're going to have to scroll back, James. Okay. Scroll back. I have to move your drink. Oh, it's water, Sorry. sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, clear so clear heads. Passcode the game. JWC. No, 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 no. John, John, oh, what John. has John said? Oh, John is so cryptic. Set, ready, set, go. Could be set. Ready, set. You need a keypad and a mind link. Uh-oh. And a joy board. Oh, I have a keypad, but not a joy board. So that's uh, ready, set, go. And set was in capital letters, so I'm going to say set. Ready, set. Set. Somebody said set. Set, set. Everybody's saying set. Try set. <laughs> I have to switch away from this. I have to set up a chat. Set go. What did he say? You just said it. I just said it. Oh my god. What did you just say? I said a lot of stuff. Invite John, Nathan, uh, Zoom. I don't know. RSG. Ready, set, go. Maybe. Oh, maybe. RSG. Sure. Let's yeah. give it a try. Be go. <laughs> oh, well, could be two letters. So. Let's try go. There's also an exclamation mark, so let's try that first. <laughs> oh, going the wrong You're way. not on just yet, but we'll, <laughs> we'll bring you in after we guess this, or maybe not guess it. <laughs> Might be a bit hard. We can't hear you yet. Oh! <gasps> yeah. There we go! What is that? Race car. 
Atari age. <laughs> Race car. Turbo. Oh, ooh. ooh. I'm not familiar with Turbo. Turbo Arcade? <laughs> or Turbo Arcade. Oh, wow. Champ Games. Oh, John went away. Oh, it's switched over. Uh, okay. Ranking list. Standard. Coding and design, John W. Shampo. Art and graphics, Nathan Strom. Sound effects, Nathan Strom. <clears throat> Turbo Arcade. Awesome. Love the colors. Novice, standard, advanced. Nice. Oh, the colors are gorgeous. That car is amazing. Yeah. How did he make that car? <laughs> <laughs> what a play field. Excellent. Okay. So, uh, start it up. <laughs> are you able to hear him? Actually, no, you not should yet. be able to. No, nope, no. Oh, because he's not on the screen yet. Yeah. Okay. Um, start it up. Let's go. Press the button. Oh wow. Oh my goodness. Three D cityscape. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Somebody guessed this. Turbo. I'll have to look through the notes. Whoa! Holy crap! Wow! Look at that! Oh, a nice racing game for the 2600. There's like a hill. There's trees passing by. <laughs> Me uh, getting hit by a whole bunch of cars. Using the play field to a great extent here. It's beautiful. Look at the colors. Wow! Oh, whoa! Oh. Look at that turn. From behind. Oh, oh, oh! Whoa! I'm apparently oh on my the god! Oh, nice flag! Oh my god! The ambulance. I'm guessing you. Is it like Spy Hunter? You have to go into the ambulance. Oh, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Never played Turbo. It's terrible. I do have it on cartridge for the Coleco. John wants to talk, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think we'll bring in John. Yes. As I mangle Especially this since game. I know nothing about this game, so he'll have to fill us in. Okay, so let's try and get John and Nathan on the chat here. <laughs> okay. John, are you with us? Game over. Nope, you're not. See you. Uh, I can hear I can hear John and oh, James. There we go. Now I can hear you. John! Hey, welcome to the show! Hi. Good. How are you doing? Good. Good. I'm just gonna turn up the volume. Oh, you're a huge fan of racing games, so we'll turn this <laughs> So, Turbo. When when was this put out in the arcades? When is this from? 1981. Yep. Very early 80s, like you said. Yes, exactly. Yep, there's a game that uh, Nathan and I both uh, enjoy. We had actually a prototype that was released um, um, through Atari Age uh, about 10 years ago, and Nathan had done some mock ups. So uh, we decided to revisit it a few months ago, and this is what we came up with. So hopefully, uh, hopefully everyone enjoys it. Oh, that. The play, f the use of playfield in this is unbelievable. It's incredible. Nathan did an amazing job with this, so uh, that's why. Uh, he, uh, he did the scaling of the trees. Oh my god. That's why we needed 64k for this. <laughs> that's for sure. I, it it really reminds me of, like, just in the slight bit, uh, Chris Walton's uh, use of uh, the playfield. In uh, Zevius. Yeah, that's exactly where we got the idea, actually. So uh, um, we originally tried to do uh, um, this is using the same four-color method that uh, um, Chris used in, in Zevius. So uh, Nathan was already already pretty well versed on how to make the uh, backgrounds using that. So I spent a lot of time just developing uh, tools to import his graphics to generate the data that we needed for the uh, for, for the game. So. Oh wow, uh, Nathan, are you on the line as well? Yeah, I should be. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Yeah. This is a lot of graphics. This is because I'm guessing you're not doing uh, 
on-chip scaling of graphics. Like every single graphic has to be stored. No. Uh, the yeah, we, each side of the tree, size of the trees. Yeah, we had to pre-render everything. Yeah. So you know, there's no there's no like, you know, twenty six hundred mode scaling available. Um, although some <laughs> people have written demos that do scaling. Uh, really. Yeah, there's there's a handful of them out there where where they'll scale a particular object and you know, but for this, we just decided to render everything as as playfield basically and yeah, I, Xevious, uh engine. E even though the the sim probably the simplest to do is the seawall. It's it, for some reason it impresses me the most. <laughs> The, the the curved seawall. Yeah. It's it's unbelievable. Every, every single scene is is amazing in this. Uh, how, how many different uh, scenes are there? It's like the trees, the seawall, the like night, the tunnel. Too. Yeah. Um, I don't know how many actual different elements there are because I, I lost count. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, John said we were over 330 frames by yeah, the so time this. we were done with this. Jesus! Wow, a mini movie. <laughs> yeah, and and in the because uh, we went through and mapped out the first ten rounds of the arcade game, and I think there's something like 170 individual scenes, but a lot of them repeat and are variations. Right. Uh, but there's there's the city, which is iconic. You know, that's yep. the first thing you run through, and that's the first thing we had to get right. And then there's pine trees, and then there's shrubs, and then there's a snow scene and tunnels. Uh, a bridge now? Maps. Wow. Yeah, there's three or four bridges that are different. Yeah. Wow. And I guess it's a bit of mix and match <laughs> as well, because the cityscape stays on the top for some of the scenes uh, where the bottom half switches. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's all based on the arcade game, too, because there's just the two backgrounds. Uh, above the horizon in the arcade game, so. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, so you, so are, you see a city most ahead. of the time. All right. Are, are you looking to replicate every single uh, scenery uh, from the arcade? Do you have room for that? You already have, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Yes. Every, awesome. That's amazing. Yeah, every one that we're aware of is in there. Um, and... Um, you know, we haven't gone beyond round 10 yet because that's the longest YouTube video we could find of somebody <laughs> shooting their way through the game. Um, oh, funny. So, you know, at wow. some point we'll have to fire up MAME with the cheats on and, you know, play uh, longer. That's what else true. Is there. That's true. So when did you start developing uh, this game? And where did the idea come from? Um, I'm not exactly sure when we started. I know we were thinking about what game to make for the reveal a few months ago and we actually had two games we were going to do um, yeah but <laughs> wow <laughs> that we, but we started in this one first and I, th I think we spent probably the first month just coming up with the perspective and the graphics engine and uh, compression scheme because this the data has to be compressed even though uh, we have 64k um, we started off with 32 and we ran out like almost immediately um, and that's where wow. we went into panic mode so uh, um, i reached out to chris because i know he's ex um, extending his xevious uh, prototype um, or game to be um, 64k yes. so, to, so i asked him how he did it so he shared with me the bank switch uh, scheme um, but then the problem was that there's no way to run out of cartridge so we reached out to fred and right. um, fred came through in the clutch because he basically uh, um, wrote the driver to get the um, prototype to um, work on on that board, and then he sent you the board and Nathan and I. So, so basically, it's just <laughs> wow. a, yeah, so it's just it's an enhanced um, melody cart that basically it supports the arm. The problem is that the arm can't access beyond 32k on the Harmony uh, Encores right now. Um, they, okay. can, they, they can with a um, with an update. Um, I'm not going to promise anything because I don't know what I know Fred said that you know it's right. something fairly simple on his end um, but so anyway so that, that's what we had to do so uh, <clears throat> right now uh, to put this on cartridge uh, is that an issue at all like no. the, the harmony carts aside 
no, um, yeah. putting it on a cartridge. Yeah, yeah no, it'll work. Um, yeah, the board itself, uh, Fred can make the boards, and, you know, so there won't be any issue there. Um, okay. Obviously, it works in Stellar as well, so. Um, right. Yeah, so at so some demo point. Demo ROMs will be no problem. Yeah, exactly. So when people want to play the ROM on, you know, their Harmony, um, there's going to have to be some type of, you know, setup with Fred um, to uh, upgrade their. Uh, um, Harmony Encore cards to uh, to support this, so uh, right, and that'll that'll also be for Xevious as well. So if, uh, when when Chris uh, right. releases Xevious or anyone else starts doing sixty four hundred twenty eight k or two hundred six k games, uh, um, it'll be something yeah. that we do. But as always, well, Penult uh, Penult is also going to one hundred twenty eight k as well. Okay, so, so that'll be another. Uh, you know, RAM pushing, ROM pushing kind of game. Yep, exactly. So, yeah, we kind of reached, uh, again, uh, we, Turbo has so many graphics in it, and that was, that's really, we wanted to make sure, uh, when Nathan and I started this, it's like, the whole point was, we wanted to make sure we could capture every um, type of scene that uh, um, yes. Turbo has, so there's just, there's just really no way around it. I'm sure there's probably a better way to compress. The issue becomes that, because I have to render the whole screen, every single frame yeah. and that's um, alternating colors you can see sometimes it does a fade wipe into it um, oh, okay. so um, oh. you can't get too complex with your compression scheme so I had a better compression scheme but then it takes too long to decompress it and I can't um, render the screen in one frame so we had to do a balancing act there to try to get a, um, you know so we get the data down it does compress it down like 25% what it would be without compressing so it's not like it's a, a terrible compression scheme, but it's, it's right. efficient enough so we can fit everything on the cartridge, and, but um, not so complicated that we can actually um, decrypt it on the fly, every frame, and, uh, and display the cell. Um, yeah, so, so it's quite, quite, quite the, the way it's drawn, I, I'm, I'm guessing all the cars are uh, sprites. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the screen is all uh, play field, except for the top. Yep, exactly. At the top we're using the missile, actually both missiles and the ball. The ball is being used um, to draw the uh, um, the um, progress. Yeah, the progress bar for how many cards yep. you pass. Just so it, right. it does it um, on increments of two, and onto the play field, oh. we only do four. Um, and yep. then the missiles, both missiles are used for those three little um, gray dots underneath. Which represent ten cars passed. Just so you know, the object of the game is to pass ninety cars. I mean, sorry, well, that, that would be impossible. Thirty cars <laughs> in a, in ninety seconds. Um, okay. So, and every time you crash, cars pass you, and then your meter goes down. So you can see when your meter turns green, that means you've exceeded thirty. And oh, okay, so you're good so, for the next yeah. round. Everything oh. else is bonus. After no, no, no. Because if she crashes, no. then it'll, it'll go back down. I could lose. So, like, so you have to make sure you're at thirty oh. when when. Uh, when Zero hits. Okay, so it's not an automatic win when you're green. You have to no, maintain yeah, see, the green. Yeah, you see how it's going down right now. So it's, uh, yeah. So uh, there's low gear and high gear, or that's automatic? Well, yeah, you're actually in automatic. Yeah, when you go to the title screen, you can see it, it says uh, auto on the, on the front. Um, but oh. you can actually go into manual. So basically, you can do it during a game, too. You just flip the left difficulty switch to... Uh, um, a, oh, okay. and then you'll see the gear change, and basically that means you have to shift between low and, uh, and high. So uh, okay. I'm going to do that really quick, but I'll switch it back yeah, okay. to auto, though. Wait, does, does uh, Tanya not know how to Wait. drive stick? Turns into nope. a little uh, sw <laughs> switch, little switch knob. Yeah, exactly. So, a little knob, like a, a shifting knob, right? Yeah, exactly. So it, it actually makes it more challenging. That's how the arcade game is. So basically, if you're under four bars, you want to be in low gear. And then you want to time it. So when it hits four bars, that you flip to high. And if you're, you know, above four bars and you flip to low, then you know your engine will wind out. It's a good way to actually uh, quickly reduce your speed and weave around the car. Uh -huh. So uh, between that and the uh, so basically, you press the button for gas, from left and right to, to steer. So fairly simple. So game, what's so. yeah? So what's what's your history with with Turbo? Well, um, it's, um, just, yeah, just uh, um, sure. I mean, it's I played this in the arcade a bunch of times. So I don't know where we had it, but uh, um, probably the first racing game that um, 
I was in, in, introduced. I think for 1981, the graphics were amazing. So, um, so I played it on, you know, in the arcade a lot. And then um, this was one of the uh, uh, premier games for um, ColecoVision. Um, so you had uh, the driving controller for that. So my, my buddy had uh, the same guy that had uh, Ladybug um, had a, had a turbo on the ColecoVision. So I played it there as well. So. Uh, does the driving controller work on the Atari? I do have the driving controller for, um, for Turbo, actually. Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure. We, <laughs> we are thinking of adding driving controller support, you know, Atari driving controller support to this. Um, right. I just don't know if the resolution will be uh, good enough. So I'm just going to reach out to Tom um, after right. this because I know he's done a lot of work with the driving controller. So it would just detect at the beginning whether you have a driving controller or not. And, uh, uh, we would just have to work out how to, how to shift. Obviously, you can play in. Uh, that's why we oh, put in the, yeah. the auto, because with auto, all you need is gas. You don't need to shift. We're thinking you can either double click the button to shift or, you know, um, you can move the other joystick to uh, to shift if you want. And, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Or, so it, in the arcade, it had a, an analog analog uh, steering wheel? Yes, exactly. Yep. Big steering wheel and a, and a shift button, and it had a gas and, and a brake, actually. So we, we don't have a brake here. Basically, the brake is let, let go of the gas. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> digital gas yeah, exactly. <laughs> on off <laughs> did, did the arcade game have a break i don't remember ever using well, it. i'm not sure I, I i know i never used it that's yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> go <laughs> exactly <laughs> that that hill perspective and the darker shading in the in the in the distance really sells oh that thanks hill. Yeah, that, that was yeah. Uh, one of the last things I did. Oh, I did that. This all came together because I've been working on Robot War. Um, Nathan and I were working on you know the graphics a lot, and then about three weeks ago, I was like, okay, I really got to kick into the gear here. It's like we don't have a playable <laughs> game. We have it looks very nice, but you can't actually do anything. Um, oh, so okay. that's when I yeah. started kicking into gear, and uh, Nathan started providing. Actually, that's why <laughs> that's why Nathan took up sounds. Um, a whole uh, <laughs> so he's he's uh, he wears many hats in the champion's team. And, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I think some people said the uh, the siren is is impressive in the game. Yes. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, this is my first go around with attempting to do any audio besides Atari Vox, and uh, ah. John wrote a really nice utility for the twenty. Oh, lost audio. Get check, check, plugged? check. Did it get unplugged? Nope. Hmm. Nobody else can hear them either. Interesting. It's not coming through. Check. Oh, we're frozen. Check, check. Everything's frozen. Are you, are you guys able to hear me? Uh, the chat, can you hear me? My mouse is dead too. Yes, okay, they can hear me. That's weird. Nothing's on screen either. My keyboard and mouse are frozen. <laughs> and that. we're back! Hey. Congratulations, everyone! <laughs> All I had to do is remove half my RAM. <laughs> hey, John and Nathan, are you there? Yes. Uh, yes. Excellent! Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I'll just turn you guys up. There we go. Okay, well, now uh, it's uh, my turn to play. <laughs> How long was that? Half an hour? Half 45 an hour. minutes? <laughs> it felt oh, a long time. Oh my god. What a Gap nightmare. between audio and video. Is oh, there an adjustment yes. okay. to make? Yeah. Thank you, people. Well, not everyone left, so that's a good sign. <laughs> See, only the true survive. <laughs> Thank you for the people who hung around. <laughs> okay, so where, what were we talking about? Um, <laughs> Some game that came yeah, out. I don't know what that some was. Some turbo game. <laughs> Let's give it a go. So, um, very colorful cars. Whoa. So what were some of the challenges with this game, making this game? Um, 
I'll let Nathan take that one. It, I, I say <laughs> most of the challenge was uh, the graphics, of course, um, and trying to find a way to squeeze them in, um, but also have it look good. So it was, uh, I mean, that's part of what we spent, I'd say, it's maybe six to eight weeks working on. Nathan, does that sound about right? Just uh, getting all the graphics done? <laughs> yeah, for the most part, this has been a tech demo. Um, and, uh, you know, John base, basically had to build a variable speed graphics playback engine for this to work. Oh, yeah, it is pretty much like a movie playback, a playfield movie playback machine. <laughs> yeah, effectively, that's what it is. And they, these are all clips. And um, they're all, you know, they're all short cycles. You know, in animation, you have cycles that repeat, and that's how you, you know, so you don't have to animate something, you know, like a walk is usually just a, a repeated sequence, right? In animation, that's called a right. cycle. So in this, right. we had to figure out how long the cycles needed to be to make the stuff scale and look right. So uh. we started out with the buildings, and my, my initial pass at it was about 30 frames long, and that was to get the buildings all the way from the distance to the foreground. And that took up a lot of space. Yep. <laughs> and John said, can you cut that down a little bit maybe? And so... Um, you said, no problem. Yeah, you know, well, that's, that's just part of 2600 programming is it's all about compromising. You know, you have to figure out yeah. where you can shave uh, you know, store, you know, ROM and graphics and frames and stuff like that. So I went back and I reworked the city several times and okay. got it down to 20 frames. And, um, and that worked pretty well. And there's actually five different buildings in there. If there was only, you know, one or two buildings, the sequence could be shorter. But I really wanted yeah. to get all five of the arcade game buildings into it. So it looked like you're going through a city, not just passing the same building over and over. Right, yeah, yeah. So once that was working, then I and, and that all the all the graphics were done in Photoshop. So this oh the the city scene, for example, that's just that's drawn in Photoshop. Wow. And I animated each building moving in perspective because if you've ever taken an art class and had a, a perspective lesson, it's simple one yeah. point perspective. You know, everything's all okay going to a single point. And it's just drawing at a really, really low resolution. But it's, <laughs> yeah, it's the and same. Yeah, making it look good. Yeah, and it, but it's the same principle, you know. And so it's a matter of, yeah. okay, well, what can, I, what can I afford to throw away in terms of detail and still have it look good? And so I drew all the sides of the buildings in perspective, and then I scaled the faces of the buildings so that they moved, you know, from the horizon to the foreground. And uh, right. then stacked them in different layers. There's probably a couple hundred layers in this Photoshop file with everything in it, which is overkill. Wow. I mean, you know, <laughs> for, for working on a 2600 game, um, it's kind of ridiculous uh, to throw yeah. that much graphics power at a system built in 1977, but, <laughs> but it makes it possible to do things like changing the timing and, and reordering the buildings and, you know, changing the frame rates and things like that. Um, yeah. So that was, that was just the city. And once we got that working and got it down to a reasonable um, size, then I started working on the other scenes, like the trees and stuff. And um, the road stripes, which was, you know, that had to be in here to make it look like the road's moving, because that's something the prototype didn't have. Um, and it really lends to the effect that you're moving and not, you know, just dodging things that are being thrown at you. And um, yeah. so for the trees, though, um, even though they take, it takes about 20 frames, the same 20 frames to get a tree all the way from the background to the foreground, because there's several trees in there, they don't have to travel very far before they get replaced by another tree, right? Right, right. So instead of a is, 20... Is that where the compression comes in as well? I, I was going to ask about the transition of, like, say, the trees coming on the screen. Uh, well, John can talk more about the transition because the that's done um, programmatically. Basically, what he's he's doing is kind of a wipe 
um, like you would do, you know, in uh, filmmaking, right? So you're wiping from the yep. top of the screen down. So that's what most of the transitions are, are, are done. They're not actually animated. Okay. Yeah, uh, exactly. So, so, yeah. So you're, you're, you're essentially transitioning from one scene to another by just traveling the, the line down the screen from one scene to another. Exactly. Um, yeah, in short, basically what we did is uh, the screen is divided into four sectors. So we have the two sectors on the top. So you have what's displayed on the left panel, what's in the right, and then what's on the left side of the screen on the bottom, and what's on the right side of the screen on the bottom. So each scene is defined as one of those four sectors. So you can, um, that's why sometimes you'll have uh, an asymmetrical uh, display on top. So basically we can mix and match like half um, the. Um, city on one side and the snow trees on the, the right um so a lot uh, of my work was taking what nathan did actually i probably spent a lot of time just writing a java um, um utility to take his data and we actually got it down to where it was very efficient at the end where nathan can just send me raw um, bitmap files and i have a powershell script that can take I think we have 300 or so um, scenes, and it can just take those bitmaps and generate all the code that I need. Um, so if he makes a change, I literally just drop it into a folder, run the script, and within like 20 seconds, I have 40k worth of uh, graphics that I just link wow. to my program. And uh, so that, that was probably the biggest uh, challenge for me was writing that, and then uh, then the engine itself was, you know, so basically it, it can animate. The top, uh, actually, each of these uh, sectors, the four sectors, um, at different at different rates. So, end up being pretty flexible at the end. So, um, that's incredible. Yeah. So, um, going forward, uh, like we have uh, right now, it basically mimics. If you played this in the arcade side by side, you basically would see the same exact scenes coming up. And Nathan actually spent a lot of time um, putting time um, um, time marks in an Excel spreadsheet, saying this came up at four point two eight seconds. This stayed on screen for X amount of seconds. So then I did wow. that and I converted that into how many frames we needed on the Atari. And so that's basically how they kind of sync up. Um, but the uh, good news is that defining a scene only takes like four or five bytes because you basically say, what do you want? Uh, up, down, left, right, and what color do you want? Um, wow. But so we can basically mix and match and say, okay, now I want light posts on the left and I want, um, you know, uh, the seaside view on the right. And, um, Right. So it's kind of it's kind of cool. It's very flexible. So the actual map that we have, uh, I just ran out of time because it was, uh, you know, that part is kind of uh, um, a pain to type in. But uh, we're trying to figure out a better way to do that as well. Um, but anyway, so that's uh, that's kind of how it all works. So. Yeah, very interesting. It it's it seems like you're almost overlaying the player graphics on top of a a rolling background. Almost like you're you're overlaying them on top of a movie. Yes. That's playing in the background. Yep. It's it's like those that handheld. Yeah, the cell game. animation, kind of. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Or that old racing game, where your your digital derby. Your steer, your steering wheel actually physically moves a car across the screen, and it's just yeah. I can't remember what the name of it is. That it? Digital derby. Digital derby. Yeah, it was a handheld yeah, game. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It just really reminds me of that. Yeah, it's like so it's kind of cool. So, yeah, so the engine itself, um, certainly we are, um, we're obviously using an entire uh, single line um, play field, um, all, uh, you know, all 40 uh, play field bits, and we alternate yeah. colors on each. And it's flexible enough, as you can see, like when the hill comes up, you can actually define different color bands um, right. anywhere you want, really. So it's kind of, it's very flexible in that way. So it doesn't, so this engine could be used for any type of game. Um, that I was just thinking that yeah. it, this is very, very flexible. Like for three D games, like I've never thought you could do a three D game like this. You, yeah, you could. On the twenty six. Yeah, you could technically. I mean, this this uh, this supports asymmetrical, as you can see right there. Asymmetrical single yep. line. You can do repositions in the middle um, of both players and the and the ball. Actually, we don't use the ball in, at all. We just use the players and the. Uh, um, it was actually difficult to put mid, um, to put repositioning um, in this in the game without having any black lines. As you can see, repositioning is basically anywhere. That's 
Um, that's true. So that was that was actually com complicated for me because um, that was that's kind of why we took up this project to begin with is that well we both liked the game a lot. Um, yeah. It was a good uh, good um, opportunity for me to work on a different kind of game, Nathan as well, like a racing game. So we don't have any racing yeah. games, but also the challenge of just this was like I said we spent two two. Um, Two months just working on uh, basically a tech demo, like trying to get the Atari to do something we didn't think it could do. So it was, uh, so yeah. in that sense, it was, uh, it was it was a fun, it's a fun project to do. Plus, it's actually a very fun game too, as it turns out. So it is. It's really it's fun. It's challenging. It's yeah. really challenging. Very challenging, but especially round two. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. It's actually easier to control your car, and Nathan will test this. He did most the most of the testing. So not only is he the graphics and sound guy, he's also my lead tester. Um, if you play with the, uh, play with a standard, you, know, you have much more control over your car. You can like jam into low uh, and go back really fast. Um, you can control your um, acceleration much better, but certainly, you know, this is the most accessible way to play is, uh, you know, on automatic. Yeah. So we wanted to, as usual, we'll have, uh, there's three skill levels and they're all, all pretty, uh, we didn't really work much time on it, but, um, they are different enough where novice is easier than standard and advanced. It's harder than, uh, than, than and I put on an advanced for a second and it was just brutal. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. Brutal. They, uh, they swerve a lot. And, um, we basically, what, what we did is, um, I named turbo heads, a bunch of ROMs and it looks like they went through a couple of iterations of their ROM as well. So there's old versions of, uh, turbo, the arcade version where it was very, very difficult. The, the eyes are swerving all over the place. Uh, so that's kind of what, <laughs> We base it advanced off of, but it's not even as bad as that. So standard, we tried to um, nail the, uh, um, the difficulty and uh, skill required to play the later revision of uh, Turbo in the arcade. So, so you said there's still uh, a ball available. Uh, yeah, time yeah, for a ball. yeah. And we can also put um, sprites on the top. We're thinking of putting things like, well, I don't. I keep giving away all the surprises, but you know, we can have sprites <laughs> on the top, like where the. Uh, so you can imagine things maybe in the sky, or you know, because uh, as you can see, there's no sprites above the uh, horizon. So we can have yes. two sprites there. You know, they can be large sprites. Um, they can, you know, basically do whatever you want. So uh, um, there's definitely some opportunities there. As you can see right there, as we put the flag there. Um, yep. I know I'm. That's true. Usually, all my games have a lot of flicker because they have a lot of. Uh, um, not really a flicker, I should say, but there's a lot of objects because uh, kind of ro yeah. Robot War has like whatever, a hundred of them <laughs> on the screen. Um, yeah. <laughs> this one, you know, this game doesn't. It was nice to actually make a game that, you know, there's no flicker in this at all, basically, except when the cars no. um, cross the paths. But, you know, so it's. Uh, um, oh, yeah, there is two. Your, your car is made up of two colors, I. Is it? No, 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 it's not. It's so it's three cars in a line would would incur flicker. I yes, guess? exactly. Yep. Yeah. Actually, the, um, um, the 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 status screen on top was a little bit of a challenge too. As you can see, I actually have four colors on the top where you have your score, oh you have the uh, low high, the um, that's true, and the uh, so that was that was a good. That uh, looks like thirty hertz flicker there. Yep, it's uh, the ninety six uh, pixel sprite, but. Um, I was able to modify it enough to get um, four different, you know, separate colors uh, per line on that, um, which was uh, pretty cool. Very nice. Yep. Yeah. Um, so if anybody has uh, questions from the crowd, from the chat, oh, will a demo ROM be available after the stream, or are you still going to do be doing some work on it before a, a release? Um, yeah, it will probably, uh, it won't be available after the stream, as usual, I get a, um, you know, um, polish things up. I don't think we've seen any bugs, which is good. So, which is surprising no. because it's like Nathan said, 36 hours ago, oh, this was a tech demo, and I went into panic mode. <laughs> I went, I, we are running out of time. I went, I got because uh, it's, it's such a nice game to look at that we spent a lot of time working on the graphics and uh, doing the scenes and like those uh, yeah. light, light posts. I think were a late addition. Um, they're beautiful. They're nice. We also changed. Oh the, my god! Whoa! Oh, oh my god! We just went through some. A bridge, almost. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like a, yeah, the red bridge. I, that's a, that's a famous red bridge. You know? Yeah, I was kind of obsessed with making sure that got in the game because when I was playing the arcade game, that was sort of my uh, reference point to how well I was doing. If I could get to that red uh -huh. bridge each time, then I knew I was having a pretty good game. And up until yes. a couple of days ago, it was gray because I couldn't quite figure out how to get the colors in there that we wanted, but. 
Ah. Um, one of the things John did while we were working on this is a very uh, back and forth process. This whole thing has been a lot of um, really interesting collaboration between the two of us because you know he was talking about his graphics importer and I was having to do quite a lot of manual um, fussing around to get the graphics to a point where he could import them. And I just, at one point I asked him, hey, could, could I send you this instead? And could you write the code that split everything out into individual lines? And he said, yeah, I can do that. And it's like, oh, well, <laughs> that just saved me two hours. And, um, <laughs> nice. You know, so the other thing that he added though was um, a color adjustment mode. So we can, yeah. we can go in, it may, may be in this version, I'm not sure, but one of the difficulty switches would allow you to, to switch it over to a color adjustment mode. So we could change all four colors that make up each background. And oh. that's yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, if you, uh, if you flip the, um, the pause, the uh, color black and white, um, it'll uh, bring up a color editor, um, similar to the one we, I put into a Ladybug Arcade. So it's, uh, it's, it's really a cool tool because, uh, the, you know, obviously Nathan will use it on uh, real hardware to adjust the colors. That's why the colors look so good, by the way. So you see right there? Uh, That's probably the worst one to do because... Exactly. There's only two colors. Just yeah. to the next scene, yeah. yeah. So I'll let you get past this to a yeah. uh, more colorful screen. Eric. Yeah, so that, that so, came in handy because, you know, that we have scenes like this, which are, you know, you get through, um, sure. like, this, like the snow. Yeah, that's yeah, that's that's like you can see, have a different see right color there. So, yeah, so if you move left mm -hmm. and right, you can see right there. Yeah, so if you move left and right, you can see right there. So, yeah, so if you move left and right, you can see right there. Yeah, so if you move left and right, exactly. So uh, Nathan right. can explain it. He uses it more than I do, so. Pink yeah. snow. And the top half is is a different set so you have to flip the other difficulty switch to adjust the bottom half of the screen. Oh, yeah okay. so if you flip the right difficulty switch you can change the bottom and then you see um, okay. you can change the background colors by holding down the button that's why there's a button there so you see it says left and right and then there's a button icon next to where it says bk mm. so you can change the background colors you can change so if you hold the button down yeah oh wow Really nice. Yeah, so actually... It's not, change it, the snow into grass. Yeah, we're thinking of uh, making a desert scene and stuff like that. So it's going to be a lot of Ooh. opportunities for some cool colors in here. Oh, for sure. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's some deserty kind of things. You could put some cactuses in it. Yeah, cacti. Yeah. Cacti. Cacti, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this this made it possible for, like, there's a there's a night version of the city that you drive through in the arcade game. Ooh, and all they do in the arcade yes. game is change the color palette. And so that's all we had yeah. to do here too. Is so I just so. sat down with this on real hardware and kind of figured out, okay, well, what <laughs> what four colors work for that? And yeah. that so a very inexpensive way of getting a variety. Yeah, well, and it's, it it gives us a, a really good look at what this is going to do because this is all color mixing. It's not yeah like your standard you know palette where you can just pick a color and it's going to look like that. These are all color pairs. Right. And so that's yeah. that's where that red bridge kind of came into, you know, came into it because we'd been using the standard four colors. You know, we have green for grass, we have light green for trees and shrubs, and then uh, blue for the sea, and then what was left over is the road, and that came from Zevius basically. Um, right. That's cool. So you actually play with the, <laughs> the colors too. So. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well. Oh. So when it goes to the next scene, so it, does it, it just set it yes. for that scene that she changed the colors for? Well, um, if the, uh, basically there's, I think, 12 different color palettes that we have. So it'll it'll save them uh, for, for any scene that uses scenes. that. So if you change, oh, like, this okay. scene, this has yeah, the... Yeah, that uh, background is different. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, will, it will save it for the whole thing. And, you know, we could yeah, technically uh, have it saved to the Atari box so people could actually change the colors they want and then, yeah. then you can actually well, when you're change the uh, colors if you hit the reset button it'll bring it back to the way it's supposed to be okay so so let's see uh if there's any questions oh, it's, uh, oh somebody had a question about the uh the, getting rid of the black line, I'm guessing the cycle 74 H move. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. So we do. Uh, I'm doing an early H move um, for all my repositions. So there's no. Uh, you can't see it, obviously. So that's uh, that's something I've been doing for a while. So 
you know, I think the only game actually Robotron I do not um, use the early H move because as it turns out the uh, play field starts on the or the, the arena starts on the third play field um, oh, okay. um, and the pixel, background yeah so and plus in Robotron if you do early H moves you can't shift um, the ball or the missile right um, to be, um, so for Robotron, I needed to be able to do that to draw the missiles to have, you know, have them diagonal and stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, so it just worked out well. But as, since we don't use the uh, missiles or the, or the ball, I think someone pointed out that um, the ball would just get lost in the uh, play field anyway, so we really can't use it. We could use it on the road because the road is all background, so you would see it there. But um, Okay. It's, it's, so I was just thinking using the ball for, like, um a shooting game, yeah. Like, a, say, a spy hunter type game, or yeah, or um, you know, I don't know, a flying game, a helicopter flying game through the through the city. Yep. Yeah. So you could use it because you'd see the ball in the uh, where the road is. Yeah. And again, yeah, it's all depends. The only one, you know, the, um, Nathan uh, when he changed the color of the uh, bridge to red, which is great to use um, to do, he had to have yeah. the um, play field in the road. So. When the first time I loaded it up, you know, I had collision detection for the play field and my car was just getting um, <laughs> lambasted because of this thought it was running into stuff the whole time. So I had to change. Uh, um, oh. Yeah, so I, I did end up going with a different type of um, collision detection, which actually ended up working out better So um, okay. for the uh, stripes on the side. So. Um, somebody's asking about... Uh release schedule for your upcoming games mm -hmm. and um i don't i don't even know if we talked about your uh new website last time you were on for atari age day uh i don't know if we discussed it yeah but you, you have a new website uh with all your games and uh, selling your uh digital roms as well yep yeah, uh, my my uh, brother Paul, he's, he's he works for Go Go Daddy, so uh, <laughs> we've been working nice. on this thing for Good a while. Up. I mean, we're, neither <laughs> of us are uh, web developers at all. He's he's more like a, he does like server stuff and whatever. But so we struggled through that, but uh, we we got something working, and uh, that's basically it's just uh, it's just a way for us to uh, you know right now I think we're at nine games. Um, with yep. three in the works to get released this year, and then this one makes it. 13 so you know with that many games you just wanted to have a central spot where people can go and uh, download the latest roms and uh, uh yeah and as you know people have been asking about buying being able to buy di digital copies you know no, not everyone wants to buy a box copy you know not everyone has a real system so uh, so That's you know good. we're actually working with al at atari age on even though um he's been wanting to sell them on his site um but it's been uh, yep. you know Al, he has a lot Al, of work to do. <laughs> he has, he's just lazy. No, I'm just kidding. He, he obviously, I mean, he's, he's like I said, yeah, he's, he's, he has so much stuff going on. So yeah. Yeah, at, at some point, we just, just, you know, I worked with him and said, look, we'll start selling the ROMs on our site. Uh, eventually, when, right. you know, Atari H has the infrastructure, we can sell them on there as well. So but we're, we're working in tandem. That's why, uh, you know, if you already own the box copy, uh, right now we're selling um, Galaga. Wizard of War and Nappy. So if you already bought the box copy from Al, we give you a discount on our end, and it'll be vice versa yeah. too. So um, yeah. yeah, so that's basically what's going on with that. So um, so yeah, we'll be that's posting great. a page about Turbo. We have an in development page um, for you know Robo Robot War, which was supposed yeah. to come out in spring, but again, Al's busy. <laughs> Um, you know, he's, with all the games yeah exactly so that'll probably be delayed a little bit but you know, it's basically done i mean the game is done the um, david exton's done a great job with the uh, manual so we hope to release that um in the next month or so nice um and then um again Nate, i don't know what nathan's been up to but you know as soon as he <laughs> um, gets off is lazy and starts working on yeah. the uh, core for arcade stuff uh, we hope to release uh core for arcade Summer, yeah. um, but it's oh, still very exciting. Yeah, I still have some work to do on that. Ladybug Arcade, actually, I did that one fairly quickly. Um, you guys played that a few times. Um, yes. Yeah, so we're hoping super to, fun. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That, that one came along. Yeah, that one came along a little bit quicker than the other ones because you know it's 
I already did it once, so. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, certainly it's a quite an enhancement, so we hope to have that one out by the end of the year. So then ne next year, it looks like we're going to, uh, Nathan and I have been talking about, we've been chomping at the bit to get to Champ Sports Baseball, so I think that's going to be, yes. a, I think we're going to spend the summer. The, ho the hockey and baseball. Yeah, we're going to work on that for a little bit um, this summer, so. Um, but next year, it looks like uh, this is pretty close, I think. I mean, we obviously want to do a lot of extras for it, but I'm hoping to release this in uh, 2022. And um, I, I want to get back yeah. to kicks as well. I'm still not sure if we're going to do it, but yes, I've been thinking about that one. And uh, um, I think it looks and plays great um, on the 2600. Uh, did, you know, it's chunkier, but I think there's enough room to, to play it. Absolutely. On, on the screen. I think yeah. I think so too. It'll be uh, fun to find out. It's just one of those things where I just got to sit down and get a, you know, again, it'll be that'll be a challenge because I got to figure out how to do like the lines and how it fills and have it do yes. it without rolling the screen. So there's a, <laughs> again, that'll be something, something challenging to work on. And then, you know, this there's, there's always something else in the work. So, uh, but trying to make a transition yeah. to doing more. Um, original games but you know it's mm, nice. it's just tough though it's, it's like uh, you know because you do an original game <laughs> it takes a lot more yeah, work you end up spending a year designing it which is fine but you know yeah. I, I, I don't i don't have the the patience for it i guess it's, it's kind of like <laughs> one of my uh pet peeves i guess it's like once i get something working or it started you know i want to have it released so people can play it so and then i can That's stop true. worrying about it too so <laughs> Ice Posta says we're still using the altered colors. I don't think I reset yes. it correctly. No, how, you didn't. How do, how do I reset it? Uh, you actually have to go into the editor itself on that scene and then hit re reset. But it, it's fine. It, on it, that. It, it looks oh, kind of okay. cool. You know, people will. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know. That's right. It's customized. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. We, we, we plan on doing that anyway. So we're going to be, uh, you know, you can even reuse a scene, have it be a different color. And, uh, you know, it'll be something for people to, to try to reach as they play the game. You know, so it'll be a. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Ground Trooper asks, what is the size of this again? It's a 64K. And yeah, so like I said, when, once Nathan gave me this um, city scene, and that came in at a whooping 6K or something like that, I went, okay. Uh, <laughs> wow. We were able to reduce that down, especially when he reduced the number of frames. But I just did the math quickly and I said, well, unless this is just going to be the city scene, we're going to need a little <laughs> bit more. And that's why, uh, again, I want to thank, uh, you know, Chris, um, Chris Wall yeah. uh, for. Uh, Help me out with uh, the um, 64k uh, bank switching scheme. So I was, I was able to convert it in just a couple hours. So that was great. And of course, Fred. Yeah. Fred's really been working hard, uh, and he, he sent us those uh, those um, melody boards too, so we can play some of the harder. Yes. So. Yes. Thank you, Fred, for getting that uh, cartridge over to me so we can demo this amazing game. Yeah. Of course. You know, once we went up to 64k, I ended up filling it all up again. <laughs> yeah, isn't that always the case, right? Yeah, we're, we're actually down. Oh, we have yeah. more room. <laughs> yeah, we're actually down to like 300 bytes. But um, in, in, in our defense, um, there, uh, I was, as you imagine, the last 36 hours was just I was just throwing code at the screen, going, okay, let's, I'll, I'll optimize that later. So, just at Atari yeah. Age, I know we only saw it once, but the Atari Age uh, um, wipe with the car driving by, that takes up three k. Oh. That takes up three k. Just that alone. So. Um, um, but it's <laughs> that was that was hours ago. I've forgotten all about it. Exactly, it's <laughs> we'll kind of cool. Take a look at it again. Yeah. So um, yeah. That and uh, anyway. So yeah, yeah. There's, there's a lot of big chunks here. So it's, even though it sounds like it's a complicated game, it's uh, like I said, 40k. I think it's graphic. So yeah. and we oh, yeah. shoot up some on other transitions too, because even though a lot, of, most of them use the white, um, the city yeah. doesn't, because there's there's a okay. An extra set of frames as the buildings come in from the distance and as they exit, because it yep. wouldn't have looked quite as good as if they just you know wiped and all of a sudden you see half half buildings. So there's an extra, could you, extra like, 35 raise, frames for that. Could you raise the buildings into view or, or make them go out of view? Or I guess it depends on what the arcade does. Really, you're trying to you're trying to get close to what the arcade does. Yeah, right? well, the arcade uses all sorts of really weird proprietary scaling hardware that I think was kind of a first uh, for Turbo. And so it's yep. it's taking flat graphics and scaling them and then it's skewing other ones and scaling them. And right. so to get that same kind of effect, 
where you know because they're able to take individual sprites and make them small and pull them all the way from the distance off the screen. So to be able to do that with the city, it's animated. You know, and again because everything was in layers in Photoshop, I could turn layers on and off and just make a group of buildings that scrolled on and off. And mm -hmm. the curves also have um, transitions as well, which are done by hand because we wanted them to be less abrupt than yes. ones in the arcade. So there's a lot of ROM eaten up on stuff like that. The tunnels um, have entrances and exits. Fortunately, they're exactly yeah. the same animation. They're just color swapped. So it's blue on the outside ah. and black on the inside, depending on very the smart. Color. So there's there's uh, a lot of lot of um, eye candy in the game that yeah. was, you know that chews up a ton of space. Oh yeah. Um, S. Ramirez asks, what controller types are supported, or let's extend that to what controller types do you you think you might support in this game? Um, well, it, it obviously supports joystick, and we want to add in driving controller support. Um, I'm yeah. not sure if the resolution will be good enough. I think it should be. Um, um, yeah, because so, it's only a narrow, you know, space that you're moving in. Yeah, so. exactly. Certainly not paddles, because, you know, paddles, you still have to read on every line, and, you know, we'd have to yeah. give up something to uh, get paddles Paddles are work. a very different beast, too. Yeah. Like, it's absolute positioning. You'd be, like, whipping the car back and forth. Yeah, paddles would not work yet. I think driving control would be really cool, though. Well, that, and, uh, oh, yeah. like I said, you can obviously play... Um, with an automatic shift, no problem. And yeah. We were just, we were thinking, you know, double click to uh, shift, or you could always, always have someone else you know, use a secondary joystick to shift if you want, or or a foot pedal or whatever, you know. Whether yep. Or a joystick on the floor in the second port yep. and press your exactly. foot on the. Yeah. If you just tap it, we can have button. it so you just tap it and it'll just swap. So you don't have yeah. to like Low press. High. Yeah. You don't have to press up or down. You just like tap it and it'll, uh, it'll uh, you know, uh, switch whatever you were at. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, driving controller would be a lot of fun. I'd I'd love to see us be able to include like a little three D printed steering wheel you could snap onto the top of it. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that would be a nice little bonus. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> we'll we'll get we'll get Al right on that. <laughs> Put it on his list, right to the top of the list, right? <laughs> so, um, I think I don't know if we discussed uh, the different levels of difficulty um there's three right now in the game and what are the what are the differences again yeah we kind of just threw that together um right now it's basically the differences are um i think um well the cards will come at you faster so basically the cards go slower the enemy cards in expert so it sounds like that would be easier right but no it actually makes it harder because then they'll come up <laughs> at you faster so they go faster yeah. in novice um so they um, and like the delays uh, when they come out. Um, the biggest thing is how much they swerve. So novice, they really don't swerve that much. Um, right. And but in uh, um, advance, they swerve on the road a lot, which actually certainly adds to the challenge. Also on the snow oh, yeah. on the snow scene, you'll skid more on mm -hmm. expert. Right. Um, just so you know that where it says RD one, that's the round you're on. Um, that's, okay. that, that's that's the color of whatever skill level you're on. So blue is a standard, so that's how you can tell right away. So. And it has car, like, lives? or cars in the top right? Little like, car icons? Like, when do you lose a car? Um, I thought this was a time-based game. Well, it's a time-based game, and it also has lives. Um, so the first round is just time-based. So that's how the arcade was. Okay. So you don't lose. So as you can see, when you get hit, you basically just spin down to the bottom. Um, okay. But obviously, when you do that, cars pass you, and so as you can see, Tiny's not going to make it, or I think you guys are. <laughs> nope. Um, but then after that, so basically what you do is you get, that's also a difference, is that um, in, um, what do you call it? Uh, uh, not Easy mode. Yeah, in easy novice. mode, you get two reserves, um, in uh. novice, you get one, and x-ray, you get none. But you get a, <laughs> you, you get a reserve, and that's how it is in the arcade, you get none, but you get... Yeah. You get an extra reserve when you complete a round. Um, oh, okay. And you can have up to, I think the arcade has four, but we change it so you can have nine. So what will happen is, if you ever get to that point, you'll it'll see, instead of having the icons, it'll happen 
like an X9 or X7 or whatever, how many you have. Oh, okay, rather than nine cards. Yeah, so, so basically, <laughs> in a row. yeah. Uh, it can actually, the way the, um, that was also a complicated um, kernel, that last one as well, so I could only have two uh, icons there, um, car icons before. But anyway, so um, with Brown 2, every time you crash, you lose a life, so it gets much more um, challenging. So you basically have to be much more careful. And that's where I think uh, using like, uh, like I said, we added the um, the difficulty switch. We'll switch between standard um, or um, yeah, um, manual and uh, automatic shift. So um, right. with the automatic shift, like right now, if you jammed into low, you would go back really fast. Um, and that's um, a good way right. to try to avoid like that thing right there. Yeah. I don't know. So. Well, uh, anything you want to add before I let you go? I, think, uh, I don't know. I, anything I else? One other quick thing. Somebody was commenting that sure. they were kind of impressed that John was using Java and other tools, and we'd used Photoshop mm -hmm. for an Atari 2600 game. Um, it's actually a little more ridiculous than that, too, because I did the tree scaling in After Effects. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that that must be a first for a twenty six hundred game. <laughs> yeah, the use of After Effects. It, it's a bit overkill, but it served its purpose. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, it's just it's whatever tools you know make it work, and you know I've been yeah I've been using Photoshop forever and After Effects forever, and um, you know when it came down to well how do I get this tree to scale cleanly? The buildings were easy because they're geometric, you know they're square. Right. But the trees have all that detail, and in Photoshop, the scaling tools don't work so great. So I just <laughs> took a really large tree into After Effects, pulled it to scale it, you know, and it's a super low resolution image, and um, then exported it back into Photoshop and cleaned it up. So I don't know if, if that's a first using After Effects for a 2600 <laughs> game, but, you know. It's, it's one of a few if it is not the first, yeah. <laughs> that's for sure. I would think. Yeah, it is. It is. It is mind blowing uh, that this is possible. Uh, <laughs> like it, it. It took the Xevious uh, technology and turned it 3D. <laughs> yep. And 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 this the scaling. So it just it just layers upon layers, and it, it's great how that works in the community where you know one idea leads to another idea leads to another innovation you know uh 45 years later <laughs> almost <laughs> next next year's the 45th anniversary of uh, the 2600 is it really yeah oh wow um so yeah it's 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 incredible that uh uh this type of game can can be even realized on the on the system uh i think somebody said uh, Canadian Tender says I love this community you're all so brilliant <laughs> wonderful thank you <laughs> yeah <laughs> well th thank you so much uh, uh, John and Nathan for uh, letting us debut this brilliant game absolutely turbo well thank yeah. you thank, thank you page. to both you guys yeah it's um, been it's been yes. fun this is this has been a really different project for for both John and I you know and that's that's one of the things that keeps this hobby so interesting is because it's yeah. like well, what do, what do we, what can we do that's different? I mean, you know, people, you know, we were we were looking at all the different guesses that people had, and and we were kind of worried because like, oh, you know, the, they're all looking for shooters, and you know, <laughs> sorry, more you know, shooters. Yeah, you know, things, I demand them. <laughs> things that they're very that they're very familiar and comfortable with, and it's like, well, we're we're going to remake something that already exists again, and it's a racing game, which there there aren't enough of yeah. on the twenty six hundred. Not really, very few. Yeah, yeah. But it, but it was kind of, it was like, well, what can, how can we do this, and make it really yeah. cool? And there were, there were actually two completely different approaches that we were looking at in the beginning. Uh, mm. in the blog post that I linked to earlier, um, I did some mockups back when we were working on the prototype update, um, and so we kind of we. John did a, con a proof of concept version of that where it's not using the Zevius thing; it's just doing um me you know like midline color changes on the play field i think and yep. um, okay and it looked clean you know it looked very clean because there's you know there's no lines and things but it was too limiting 
you know, there wasn't, you know, there, yeah, there was just not enough cycles to do everything we wanted to do with it. And so we were thinking about that or this. And then as soon as we started putting this together, we realized, oh, we can, we can paint with this basically, you know? Yeah. A very low resolution, uh, feel that you can paint mm. for four pixels at a time, you know? <laughs> Yeah, and just four colors too for each section. That too. But that but that's better than what we were able to get with the other method because for that, you know, we could get a green for the trees, a, you know, for using playfield green for the the background and then gray for the road, but we couldn't get yeah. that fourth color in there for anything. So, you know, doing the road stripes would have been a compromise and doing the buildings would have been a compromise and um it's surprising how freeing it is to be able to have four whole colors to play with. Yeah. Unbelievable. Now you sent me a bunch of links. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately the computer went down and uh, yeah, well, I do I, have them again. I, I posted them all in the chat for, for people. Oh, good. Interested. And um, we good, can, good. we can repost some of these on the Atari age forums as well. Um, these are all just, Excellent. you know, websites and videos of different versions of the games and different um, Atari Age uh, threads about the different versions of Turbo. Because, you know, there's the the prototype. And then there back in 2003, I think there was the fake prototype that was done as an April Fool's joke. <laughs> and right. So there's there's an interesting bit of history with the 2600 version of it. Um, from my standpoint, it's been a very frustrating history because I first read about it in Electronic Games Magazine in, in 1983, they reviewed the version that they saw at CES that year. Okay. And they gave it a 9 out of 10. That's like, I want that. <laughs> and it never showed up. And it's like, oh, no. you know, it's been somewhat of an obsession now. And, you know, now we've, now we've got it. So, Yep, it has been realized. That's excellent. <laughs> um, so will there be a, a thread uh, made so people can make comments? Will you put a Atari Age thread about the about the game? Oh yes. Start one up. Yeah, I'll post okay. something this uh, weekend, and I'll post some screenshots as well, and maybe even a video if I can pull one out. Excellent. So uh, yeah, yeah, and, that, and I'll also post something on uh, Facebook, and then also uh, add a page on uh, Champ Games as well. So. So yeah, we'll Excellent. we'll have all the stuff out there, and uh, hopefully we'll get a um, a demo ROM out there soon too. But you know, like I said, yeah. people will only be able to play it in the latest version of Stella. Um, but it's still, it plays pretty well in that as well. It, it looks better on oh, a real TV, in my opinion. But um, it looks amazing. Yeah, this it looks Stella incredible. looks looks good. It looks pretty good there as well. So yeah, yeah. So I know somebody mentioned earlier that I can't wait to play it on my CRT. Yeah. So. <laughs> so. Yeah, I bet it'll look really good on a CRT with kind of the the lines blending together with the colors kind of mushing together a little bit. Absolutely, yep. Yeah, it looks yeah. It looks really good, so. Yeah. Well, thank you both so much. Yeah, thank you guys. For so coming thanks, on. Thanks, everyone, too, for joining, so. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And thanks for persevering through the technical problems, too, and for, for everybody <laughs> yeah. hanging on patiently. Yes, absolutely. thank you so much. <laughs> I, I literally had to take apart my computer. I... I pulled RAM out of the computer. <laughs> it's it's running on half RAM, and so I have to figure out. Luckily, it's the last show of, for for a couple of weeks, so I can diagnose it. Perfect. Yeah. And uh, get it all working again. Just fix it back up. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> so uh, have a good weekend, John and Nathan. Mm -hmm. um, thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. And uh, thank, thank you. Love too, the game, Tanya, and um, this has been a lot of fun. Yep. Thanks, guys. Oh yeah. Me you too. bet. <laughs> A lot of fun. <laughs> Another successful secret debut. <laughs> yeah. Now we have to start thinking about 2022. <laughs> That's right. Start start the wheels the pressure's turning. Pressure's on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Satan's all up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. You guys, Thanks, guys. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Okay. All right. Take care. Bye. 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 Thank you, everybody, for uh, sticking through. Yeah, f for the people who didn't um, yeah, my goodness. experience our half hour at least crash uh, the computer. Move it up a bit. Um, yeah, the computer like wouldn't boot. Literally, would not show anything on the screen. No. It would start and then wouldn't boot into uh, Windows. Wouldn't do anything at first. And yeah. Then I got it.
posting to BIOS, and then then it went to Windows, and then none of the devices were showing, and I was just plugging in things to every port that I could, and finally got it working. Um, Crazy. Yes. Crazy. <laughs> <sighs> but I was like, if I can do it, and I was making small bits of progress. I was yeah. almost ready to give up. But uh, I took a piece of RAM out. I don't know if that helped. Like, that was the problem, but it started running again. Mm. I mean, there's a bunch of skipped frames, but it doesn't matter too much. Not much you can do about that at it's this not, point. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's not dropping any of the stream, so that's that's all I care yeah. about. Yeah. <laughs> R2-D2 fixing the X-Wing yeah. in flight. Pretty like, much. Literally, yeah. yeah. He's under a desk. He's got the... the flashlight in flashlight. his mouth he's unplugging things he's pulling out pieces of oh cords everywhere pieces of computer ram yeah. <laughs> oh my god and uh yeah uh, poor john and nathan are skyping with us and we're chatting with them and they're watching him <laughs> yep so. i subscribed exactly when you announced the game oh uh, thank you for subscribing excellent um cat hair. <laughs> yeah it might be it might be like i need to clean it out like blow it out I'm, so i'm going to do that well, you, yeah, you'll have to you'll and have plug to everything. play with a few things and see if if you can replicate what happened. Too. Just gonna take everything out, reseat everything, including yeah. the video card, yeah. all the RAM, just all the cards. Yeah. Um, Keep the clean it out. all out. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I I'll I'll make sure because it it crashed last episode. Too. It did. Yeah. But yeah. I booted right back up, so something is not good. In Something's there. not happening. I'm gonna check temperatures as well. Anyway, that's yeah. all. Blah. Yeah. Um, all, the, all the troubleshooting that will come. Yeah. yeah. So thanks for sticking with us. Um, yes. So this is the last show for a couple of weeks. We're going to take a little break because mm -hmm. we have our anniversary, uh, 15 years yeah. anniversary. Yeah. yeah. Um, can't do anything, but yeah, uh, yeah you know, whatever. <laughs> we'll be, it's fine. We'll be fixing Just computers. Fixing computers. <laughs> Happy anniversary. Uh, and a um, lot of the things I need to do is with the computer <laughs> on the break. So yeah, that's okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, somebody was geeky there. Happy zero F anniversary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. See if we can make it to one zero yeah. <laughs> next year. Mm -hmm. Um. So I don't. It'll be at least two weeks. I don't know how much longer than that. We'll see how much yeah. I get done. Yeah. And how many games start getting released? I already have. Are, I'm building up shows. Oh, really? For after the break. Well, that's always good to have a have a schedule set up when you come back. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, because what show? What games? Like there were some games. EXO is coming up for the 7800. Oh, he's, he's getting very close. Very close to finish. To finishing that. That's gonna be fun. Yeah. Peril just uh, a release candidate nice. for Peril just got released, and yeah. I was like, ah, oh, I want to put play that. It doesn't forego us playing games during the break. Like, we may hop on and play some games. Yeah, just randomly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That could still happen. It just won't be, as you say, like a S yeah, scheduled, planned yeah, show. It might just stuff. be, here's yeah. a game. We're going to play it on the stream. So uh, I want to have an update for when you come back to my work in progress. Oh, nice. Number. Excellent. Yeah, excellent. Yes. Yeah, Peril stuff. final. Well, it's a release candidate right now. So maybe it'll be final. Yeah. The finished version when I come back. That'll yeah. be nice. I'm sure there'll be tons of games to play um, when we uh, come back um because two weeks is a long time because <laughs> i update lists of things that are released uh, yeah. and it's like slowed down a little bit in the past month yeah um but there's like one every day or a couple every day sometimes mm. like four a day but mm. yeah do you have to give the cart back uh not that i know of um you so know, sure. not right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so we'll have to see it doesn't have an sd card so it's really it's a dev cart yeah. And it's not something I would use day to day. No. Because it's not easy. You can only load like one thing at a time on it. Um, <laughs> Arena Foot James will keep it. <laughs> what if I can? I mean, it's cool to yeah. have that. Like, um, or, let's see. Yeah, it's just, it's just, there's no, there's no, there's just a USB port in the top. So it's just a dev cart. Mm -hmm. It's a plain dev cart. Remember the password? I can't remember what it is. Go? Something? Now? I'll we'll have to rewind it. No? Go. Is it go? With yeah. an exclamation mark. Yep. Uh, okay. There we go. Oh, yeah. Nothing's up on there. Um, so, oh, yeah. He linked a label, too. There's a very cool label for it. Let's see if I can show it. 
Um, yeah, that's not working. What is it working? Well, the TV over there. Eh, TV. But I can show you the label that... Um, <laughs> Everything's just falling apart now. <laughs> yeah. That Nathan did. Let's see. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Um, uh, where is it? Oh my god. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Okay. I think I can do it. No, we did not show the arcade version because we didn't know what it was. So James wouldn't have had a video. Um, what's happening? Oh, I don't have a keyboard. That's what's going really on. Oh, no. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Atari H Day wore out the equipment. Now it's just gasping towards the finish line. That is possible. <laughs> it did. Uh, it did get put through its paces on Atari HD. kind of it. <laughs> I can't really move it. Oh. So I don't have a keyboard. Anyway. You can part of see it. it. Just replicate the left hand side. <laughs> <laughs> it says Champ Games below it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Looks very nice. Nice. Now I can't get out of full screen mode with my mouse only. Because there's no. Because there's no keyboard. None whatsoever? No, I had to unplug it to stream. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. Oh, well. Uh, here's the arcade version. Oh, very cool. I can't do that right now. I can't <laughs> show it. So people can uh, click on it, and I'll take a look afterwards. Yeah. Who guessed? Yes, that's yes, right. Yes, good question. Turbo. Who gets the prize? The prize of being right. Yes. <laughs> uh, turbo, turbo, turbo. Thomas Yench, oh, oh, guessed it. He guessed it in the Zero Page Homebrew Club nice. list of games. Nice. Is that the only person? Wow. Thomas yeah. was correct. Thomas was correct. <laughs> He'll be very happy. Yeah, he yes, will. he will. <laughs> mm. uh, actually, a good label. Not kidding, but the blue tape one is charming too. Which blue tape? Oh, I don't know what. There might be another one. Um been dropping hints in my status update for a couple months oh i'll have to check check back and see what what little uh, so obscure clues, oh obscure and the dev clues? cart that label oh that's funny yeah this one's pretty good too you know 128k melody dev cart we'll go with that <laughs> one for the, for the final release huh? oh and his blog too oh uh, yeah very nice oh we're back to oh damn it there oh you just go to the top now i could got it back okay um, I don't know. What else? <laughs> After else. all of that? <sighs> oh. My brain is melted from fixing computers. Yes. So. Oh, poor computer. Yeah. I'll, f I'll figure it out. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's it. We'll be, uh, back in a couple weeks. Yeah. I'm going to be updating all the graphics and... Yeah. Fiddling with formatting, maybe? Talk Fiddling about with the format of the show a, a tiny bit. bit. Like, yeah. yes and no. It's kind of going to be different, but it's not going to be different at all. <laughs> it's just, it's going to be the same, but different. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'll, I'll tell you guys when we come back. Yeah. Um, and you're very welcome for the stream. Yeah. Um, enjoy your break. We will try our best. We will. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're just, I have a week off work. So you're off work. I am thrilled. I'm off the show. <laughs> so just some downtime, relax. Yeah. Yep. Going to come back with a hot tub stream. That's right. We're putting a, <laughs> a tiny little hot tub here. We'll have the cats in it. Or... Yeah. The cat, cats will only have their own little side. Oh, they don't want it to be in the water. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we can build one out there. Right? Yeah. On it's the, not for on room. The, yeah. Well, there, there is for a, a small drain. one. There's a train. I'm sure our, our strata would love that. Oh, yeah. They'll um, have no problems with like that. What is downtime? Yeah. <laughs> no, downtime is not really downtime for me. It's just working on other things. Yeah, working yeah. on non-work things. Yeah. yeah. Um, like my game. Mm -hmm. um, finishing off the mat or starting the manual on Zero Page Homebrew game like that somebody else made. Yeah. Um, a bunch of stuff. I went over it last show, so you can check that uh, yeah. last show for the list. And what am I doing? I'm refinishing 
a bench yes. for the front of our, our building. It's not our bench. It's, it's a not bench. our bench, but it had cast iron ends and the wood was falling apart. So somehow I have to find lumber that's not ridiculously expensive. Oh, get the cap. And uh, paint some cast iron. So. Uh, what's the latest with Darcy and Erlen? Uh, oh. We saw Erlen not too long ago yes. and we chat with Darcy once in a while. Yeah. Um, we're not allowed to travel or be at other people's houses at the moment. Yeah. We will have them back the moment Look. that's allowed. I know we went straight for the uh, HDMI cables. Psst, psst. Atari. That's why he got kicked out. He got kicked out because he was chewing cables. Oh. And you might be thinking, is he responsible? Maybe he is. Maybe, Maybe he is. It's all a part of his cat plan to <laughs> destroy the stream. Um, Look at that face. So hopefully we can have uh, Darcy and Erlen back on the show soon. Yes. HDMI is the tastiest. Yeah. <laughs> he likes a very specific type of HDMI cable. Yeah. It's this gray braided, braided braided cable. Yeah, that we have in a few places and he just yeah. goes, Oh, that's yummy. He just loves it. Yeah. So uh we're done. And mm. I'm gonna read out the names of all the people who hung in there. <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, because thank you so much for sticking with us through the half hour we were off while I was fixing computers. Yeah. Uh, D Train, Nostalgic, Arena Foot, Captain Classic, Cafe Man, uh, uh, Colonel Lama, RC70, Dan, ABC, Nathan Strom. Thank you, Nathan. Yes. Artari 2600 Dude, uh, Metal Lunar, Nostalgic, Miss Command, Canadian Tenor, um, Mike Soul, Splendid Nut, Dan, ABC, uh, S. Ramirez, Vitoko. Um, Colonel Lama, I'm going to be repeating names here, I think. John E. W. C. Thank you, John, for coming mm -hmm. on the show and making unbelievable games mm -hmm. with Nathan. Uh, Ice Bosta, uh, Nostalgic, uh, Leo Ames. Yes, he's full of HDMI cables, this cat. He is, his he's stomach. He's putting on weight. Yeah. Delightfully full chunky. Of HDMI cables. Yeah. Cafe Man. Uh, and everybody else who's lurking. Yeah. Um, so make sure you are following the Twitch stream and following all <laughs> the uh, social media so you know when we're going to come back. It'll be uh, in about two weeks, maybe a little bit longer. Um, but make sure you're following it because I'll, I'll let you guys know when we come back. Yes. Uh, as soon as we come back. So yeah. I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So we shall see you soon. Thanks for uh, being with us. Cat. No, you stay up here. Just a little bit longer, okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Vitoko. And uh, we'll see you soon. Yeah. Bye, Bye. everyone. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.